Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In these next two videos you'll be uh, seeing me building the platform for my uh, cockpit, from the home simulator cockpit. Uh, I've taken the design from the internet. Now what you see here is not what I followed. I just wanted to have a, a let's say an image to, uh, for me to show you uh, what, what's what's going to be built and what the platform of the cockpit is. The designs uh, I, I've been following is pretty much uh, the designs, all of the designs I follow, they are from a website called flightdeck737.be uh, is for uh, an active member of probably many forums but uh, um, especially of the ProSim 737 forum. Uh, he has an amazing website full of details, all the measurements of everything is done and is built um, and I, 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 just like, I just like his work so this is where I take uh, all of the information. So what what's going to happen? I'll start building. The, the the platform is going to be built in two halves. Very simple. Uh, the two halves will be completely the same, uh, and then eventually will be joined together. Uh, here I'm beginning to. I need to cut the top. Uh, side of the platform where you basically be walking or placing all of the equipment on top of it. Uh, and since the sheets of MDF, this is 22 millimeters MDF, since they are uh, uh, from the shop really large, I think the original size was 122 centimeters wide for uh, 2 meters and 44 centimeters, nearly 2.5 meters long. I had a shop uh, do an initial cut for me, just enough for me to transport at home and now I basically uh, resize it down to the shape I need. Um, what, I, what I've done is I've taken the two sheets, like I said, this is going to be two halves, so I thought uh, I'm not really, I don't really care if I if the amount, the size will be precisely down to the, milli the, the, the millimeter when it comes to the platform, as long as both halves are completely the same. So I've taken the two sheets, put them on one on top of each other uh, and place a stick of wood to act as a fence for my circular saw and now I'm basically just cutting uh, the platform to the right uh, to the right uh, length. The, the next part we're going to do is because the front of the platform is uh, smaller than the back of it because of the shape of course of the cockpit so what I'm doing now I'm start taking uh, the different measurements uh, to to make a diagonal cut uh, I'll be using the same methodology I did before uh, I'll be putting uh, a spare, a spare piece of uh, scrap wood to act as the fence for the miter saw and I'll uh, I probably I have this tendency, I don't know, for whatever reason I keep screwing up my cuts, so I, I've learned to uh, measure not once, not twice, but a lot times more than that uh, before I actually start cutting. Once, uh, of course, because this, uh, this sheet of wood is uh, is extending from top of the table saw, the table saw extension and a workbench. Uh, I'm putting some scrap pieces of wood to make sure that there is a little space and so that the uh, the blade of the saw doesn't cut through my, my table saw in the table. Uh, attached to the saw you'll see that there is a, a, a pipe that's for dust collection uh, and I wear a mask, this is all related. When you cut MDF the dust from the uh, MDF can be really really dangerous. Uh, it's always important that they use uh, a breathing mask um, and if you have the possibility to have some kind of dust collection system use that too because your shop, especially if it's a small shop like mine, I, mine is a pretty much like a one car garage, just a little bit bigger than that, uh, it just can get everything full of dust and it's, it's really not cool when you need to start uh, when you need to start cleaning up. Once the two tops have been cut, it's time to to cut the the sides. Uh, the sides are base. So what the the sides what the sides are is what's going to have to give the height of the platform. Um, those sides are twenty centimeters. So my platform is twenty centimeters high. 
and uh, that includes already the 22 millimeters of the top so so the cut of uh, the, the side itself what I'm cutting right now it's about 18 centimeters uh, plus the two centimeters uh, or 2.2 centimeters of the platform that goes on top will give a, a roughly 20 centimeters high. I think that's uh, that's more than enough. Uh, you can even make it lower if you want or higher, uh, but I think this is a, a good average. Uh, again, th there are obviously if every half that every half has uh, four sides, so I'm going to cut eight in total. Uh, and then everything is going to go up and uh, is going to be installed directly in the cockpit room. At this point I start cutting the sides to length. Uh, first we done the width, now the length. Now I can either do them like I do now on a uh, on the sled, table saw sled, or I can just use a miter saw, but because of the of the length of the uh, of the pieces of wood I have it's more comfortable for me to do it directly on the table saw sled so because once you cut them on the miter saw uh, the, the wood will snap and just fall on the side yet I actually realized that I've only cut enough sides uh, for half of the platform so I'm resetting my table saw fans to the original 18 centimeters and uh, rip a, a little bit more in the half to, to do the other four pieces of the sides The next part uh, after the sides are the ribs. The ribs are are uh, is the wood that is in between the sides that will give strength to to the platform. Because imagine you only put the sides, and you'll see it better when I'll build it upstairs. But uh, imagine you only have the sides uh, holding the top of the platform. If you're standing in the middle of the platform. Uh, and if you start putting weight, chances are that even do, even though it's a 22 millimeter uh, thick MDF, it'll well probably it's not going to break it. You're not going to fall through, but, uh, but eventually it's going to take a, a, a weird shape. So under the platform, you'll be putting. Uh, I, th I think I calculated uh, six ribs on every on every half. So. I, right now, I'm going to start cutting a total of uh, 12 12 ribs. And this is a program, uh, a printout out of a program that I usually use uh, when you need to cut these things that you have the possibility of using uh, scrap wood lying around your uh, your shop. It's a program where you input everything, all the measures or whatever it is that you need to create uh, in one table and then in another table you you put the measure of, of all the scrap wood that you have. Uh, and what this program does, uh, and I explained, I think I explained this in a previous video what this program does uh, it gives you the best possible uh, usage of the wood you have uh, so that you don't throw uh, that much away uh, um, it's it makes all the calculations for you and it tells you how to cut that and which which of the scrap wood that you have you need to use um, in uh, what I wrote by hand uh, on the right side uh, is uh, is what I have and what's uh, right beside on the left side it's uh, what I need and then all the way to the left you see the design it shows in a graphical kind of way um, what uh, what you basically need to cut it's a it's a great program and it, it really helps me saving sa basically saving money because otherwise I would have already gone out to the shop and buy a new sheet of wood uh, once they're cut I I put an, a, a little note on it uh, just as per the design so I know that what which rib is which the measures have of course all uh, have been taken from uh, a SketchUp uh, a SketchUp design I've made um, and you know if if they are perhaps a millimeter short here and there it doesn't really matter because once you screw them in it'll uh, it'll put everything together so again always use masks and I'm using a, a cross cut sled on the table so this is going to help uh, making uh, to, to make better cuts because of, of course the the wood I'm using is still pretty long uh, and hasn't been cut yet and here I continue to, to cut the rest the rest of the ribs so 
what's uh, what's left is now now that the ribs are done uh, I have basically all of the material needed to start uh, putting the platform together I'll be slowly slowly pour, bringing it uh, up to my cockpit room and the next video is very simply about putting it together uh, filling up all the holes uh, where I used my screws to put the, the platform together and uh, sanding uh, the filler and painting it and eventually I'll put the MIP that I already have on top of it and this project will be finished right after that will uh, the next project is actually going to be about uh, about building the the frame of the cockpit uh, to which eventually uh, the windows will be attached the overhead will be attached uh, and, uh, and the side walls will be well attached so again guys thank you for watching this and uh, in seven days uh, I'll have the second part of this video uh, published on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.